Hello and welcome to my video blog for Saturday, September 25th. This week, delegates and leaders from around the world made their way to New York City for the United Nations Conference. In my opinion, the UN Conference is like a dysfunctional family gathering minus the turkey. It's just like any other family gathering where there's bound to be some disagreements between its family tree. This time the rumblings came from none other than Iran's president, Hamad Ahmadinejad. Now, I would describe the Iranian leader as the uncle who would take his finger and whip it across the top of the coconut cream cake before anyone had a chance to get a piece. This is the uncle who would make little Timmy, your sister's son, with club feet and who walks with crutches, cry by reminding him that track season starts next week. This is the same guy who would tell your daughter, Annie, that she's adopted. And by the way, I think I passed your real mother working on the corner on my way to the dinner. Yeah, he's that guy who's going to burp and pass gas at the table while everyone is eating. So UN officials and the press should not be shocked by his behavior. I mean, the Iranian president looks for ways to draw attention to himself and is always out to shock everyone. And this year was no exception. Now someone else who shocked the crowd was Lady Gaga. Now she's no politician, but she definitely shocked everyone by how she presented herself with clothes on. That's right, Miss Poker Face, Telephone, Bad Romance, love that song by the way. She made her way to Oregon and she spoke on the behalf of gay advoc advocacy by saying that she is against the U.S. policy of don't ask, don't tell. Now you know she took her invitation seriously because she wore clothes. That's right. No designer costume with her breast exposed and butt cheek action. She was actually covered up. And for Lady Gaga to be covered up, then you knew she took it seriously. Now, someone who didn't take their invitation quite seriously was Steve Colbert. The funny man from Carmody Central went to Washington to give his take on migrant farming. Now, lawmakers must have known that something was quite foul when he presented his colonoscopy as Exhibit A. In the end, there were citizens and lawmakers who thought his comedic stick wasted lawmakers' time and taxpayers' money. But then again, so did the GOP's Pledge to America proposal. This is a proposal where John Biner and his friends presented a pledge in a nicely bound book stating it's an outline. It's a draft of ideas, thoughts, and proposals on how to cut government taxes. Now sharing thoughts and ideas, that's my job as a blogger. I don't get paid for doing this. I mean, I basically set up a little website, got a camera, and just start spouting out what I think. However, these guys, on the other hand, are actually elected officials. They're in office. They have the opportunity to make something happen. So hedging their way by making proposals just doesn't make sense. You're in office. You have an opportunity to do something. So why don't you make something happen? You know? I know I'm a little testy, but I'm a little under weather. But hey, deal with it, guys. Get to work. And that leads me to the president's town hall meeting on Monday. This was the meeting where a woman stood up and told the president she is someone who voted for him and that she is tired of defending him and she wants to know where the jobs are. So basically, she told him he needed to do like that Erica Badu song and call Tyrone. But silliness aside... We know where the jobs are. Most of them are overseas. They're over there, they're over there. We've sent some down there and we've even pushed a few up north. 
Now we expect the president to go wrangle them all back up like a cattle rancher and present them back to us. It's not going to happen. In my opinion, we need to start pressuring these companies who have outsourced our country into economic stress. They need to find ways to keep running and functioning as companies without stressing out the economy by sending everything overseas just so they can make a buck. Forget the politicians. They're not going to do it for us. Politicians are only going to do what's in political season dictates they do. Therefore, if they're running for office, they're all about the jobs and economy. If they're up for re-election. And if they're not up for re-election, they're basically are going to be toting party lines and doing what their party dictates. It's up, to, it's up to us to start banding together. Not as Republicans, not as Democrats, not as Tea Partiers. We need to come together as shareholders. We need to come together as consumers. And as consumers and as shareholders, we need to put pressure back on these corporations to do the right thing by its people. Stop looking at the numbers just for marginal returns so that you can send out your annual statements and say, look, look at what we did after you laid off all these people. It's just not economically sound. It's not helping us. <clears throat> so the bottom line is we need to come together in a little normal race style and we need to get inspired by doing it for ourselves and stop looking for the politicians to do it because trust me, they're not gonna do it. And I know there are other like-minded people out there who feel the same way I do. And if so, I'd love to meet you. I'll see you next time.